So you want to introduce yourself to the viewers? Sure. I'm Thomas Reynolds, uh, managing partner of the Reynolds Law Group here in Atlanta, Georgia. So what is your focus as an attorney? We primarily work on entertainment law matters, uh, but being an entertainment lawyer typically means that your clients are going to come to you for everything they need. So we've handled everything from personal injury matters for them um, to real estate deals and transactions. And of course, we do everything with regards to entertainment from distribution, artist agreements, litigation disputes, booking disputes, etc. What was your first venture into uh, entertainment law? The first big client I had back in the time uh, when I first started doing entertainment law was actually YC with the Racks on Racks uh, song that was out. Um, and so we, we were happy to work with him and kind of have him under our belt as a big name client at the time because he had a huge hit that was big all over the country. Um, and from there, I think I started working with Lloyd and Bobby Valentino next. Um, and I grew up with Lloyd, so it was kind of uh, good to kind of start a working relationship with him outside of the personal one that we had. So when an artist like YC has a big record like Rex, what kind of legal things do they need in the beginning to be prepared as they're beginning their career? Sure. Uh, a common thing that trips up artists as they're really on the upswing and starting to do well with their record is the booking disputes. Um, it's not uncommon for artists to get multi-lawsuits um, going because they've missed a date or they had to reschedule and a promoter gets upset. Uh, you see it all the time in the paper where somebody sued for hundreds of thousands of dollars and millions sometimes uh, because they missed a, a date or something they were supposed to appear for. And there's there can be real ramifications for that if they don't have the paperwork together. You know, that's actually something I heard pretty commonly about YC. <laughs> do you think that was part of the reason why, you know, maybe his career didn't continue on the trajectory that it was on? I'm sure if she spoke to YC, uh, he, he'd probably have a lot of things that he would you know, do differently uh, in hindsight, but certainly, I mean, it, every artist is imperative that, you know, they maintain a good professional working relationship with the promoters and just try to stay professional uh, with, even when it comes down to time uh, to appear for these events and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's something that kind of goes with your reputation as you develop in the career. If you build a bad reputation for those things, it's gonna affect the amount of bookings that you get, it's inevitable. Well, so outside of bookings, what about uh, you know registering an artist's oh, name sure. or copyrights? Or... That's another common error that we advise on, trademark and copyrights. Um, I couldn't tell you how many times we've had a client come in our office with a name, whether it be for the record label or their artist name, and I sit across them, and one of the first things I say is, well, we've got we've to fix that, because if you don't do it now, it's going to cause you a big headache in the future. And before you invest hundreds of thousands of dollars in marketing and branding and promotion for something you're not going to be able to keep, it's better to just, just fix it early on. So when you see artists whose name has to be uh, presented as, you know, maybe the, the Dash Dream or the game, things like that, is that related to copyright uh, issues? Yes, typically it is. And we had a, a confidential dispute just, just within the past year. I, I won't mention names in it, but, you know, it can be a lengthy process and a very expensive process to go through um, the litigation that's involved with trademark disputes. If you don't have that stuff tied up early on, it's worth the money just to go ahead and get the name established and protected for yourself early on because it will cost you 10 times as much if you wait and end up having to fight it out in court. A lot of times what you see in uh, to resolve a trademark dispute is some sort of alteration of the name or some sort of variation that will allow them to continue to use what was in the past their main uh, stage name, performance name, so that their fans and audience still recognize them, but maybe they'll have to add something to it or change a letter or, or two or how it's pronounced, but it'll still let them and their fan base uh, kind of stick to the same, at least the same concept of what they had without a complete change. So I know Atlanta has become a, a hotbed for reality shows. Oh, yeah. um, and you've done some work with uh, Apollo from Real Housewives, Carly Red. What, what are some of the matters that you were dealing with? with well, Carly has been, been great to work with. She's um, actually a really hard worker, and we helped to use her brand in Love & Hip Hop um, to establish her record label, which is Red Entertainment. Um, so I think it was last season that I was on there introducing the joint venture between Gazi over Empire and Carly Red um, to put out some new artists. You're actually going to be hearing about some of that music soon. We did a, um, a collaboration with a big artist out of Jamaica named Mr. Vegas. Um, for one of her tracks, and that should be dropping very soon, so you'll hear about that. Um, but we, we help to negotiate distribution deals for them. Um, if there is 
questions that come up regarding you know whether they have the right to do certain things on the show we can also advise those um, I have another client that approached us recently they they're just about to get put on the reality show and so we need to review the terms of their agreement to make sure you know they're protected going forward because if, if you don't have language in there obviously that can be um, you can get yourself in some very very bad sticky situations if you don't have a right to uh, edit any kind of defamatory or anything that can be to put you in a bad light uh, then you'll you might come back and regret it. Well, I know reality show contracts are not known for being especially kind to the uh, That's That's absolutely correct. It seems like because there's so many people who would do it, mm -hmm. they don't have a lot of leverage. Um, that's, that's, that's often true. Um, and, then, you know, and when that comes to it, you've got to make a decision whether or not you really want to take the risk of putting yourself in that position or not. The strongest thing you can do, as you just mentioned, is kind of go in there with leverage. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can do that by obviously building up your fan base and making sure that uh, it's something that you can take elsewhere if you need to. Um, the best alternative to a, a current deal that's on the table is another one that you could do if you don't accept those terms. Um, so that's what I always advise our clients to do. Uh, if they have an, a proposal in front of them that they're not comfortable with, then we'll go elsewhere and look for other opportunities um, because you've got to be able to stand your ground if you've got something that you think is going to be harmful or detrimental to you in your contract. Well, I know a lot of people have the perception that people on reality TV get you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and, and things like that, but mm -hmm. it seems like that's pretty rare, right? Yeah, uh, that's a common misconception uh, is that you're going to get paid a whole lot of money just by appearing on a reality TV show. Uh, typically, the way those agreements work is your first year, um, you're not going to earn a lot of money, but if you stay relevant in the show and you stay active in the show, um, your income can increase uh, drastically. So, and maybe there is even possibilities for spinoffs and other options that come from it. So I would say the biggest benefit of being involved in the reality television show in the beginning is the exposure that you get for their opportunities. And you've seen that from a lot of people. Carly's a good example. You know, she took her um, love and hip hop exposure and turned it into a Playboy radio deal. And um, she's done movie shows as a result of uh, movies with Chris Rock and others. So, um, but there's, there's plenty of opportunities to use that uh, exposure uh, to four way into other areas of, of music or entertainment. So I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with Apollo's uh, legal situation. Was that what you were helping him with on the criminal defense side? I, I know Apollo. I've known Apollo for years, um, probably decades at this point now. Um, but I don't typically do criminal law matters um, myself personally. Now a law firm helps with criminal law matters and I've got an excellent criminal attorney that works with us and so we have them work on those things. But typically we handle the civil matters and transactional deals for these clients. Um, so if Apollo, for example, is involved in or attempting to write a book, for example, um, those would be the things that he would come to us about. So is that something we can look forward to, uh, Apollo? Uh, I can't disclose uh, whether or not he will or won't be. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so this. I know you've done some work with Gucci Man. Was, was that on the criminal defense side as well? Once again, transactional uh, for Gucci. But I, I've gotten a lot of respect for Gucci. Glad he's out now. Shout out to Guo. He's uh, <laughs> obviously doing doing real well now since he's come back. But you know, we handled a lot of stuff for him when there was all that dispute going on between. Uh, the record labels and who had the rights to Young Thug and mm -hmm. things of that nature. Gucci actually uh, had me go up to Atlantic Records and sit down with them and, and discuss it because there were rumors that he was going to be signing directly to Atlantic at the time. And uh, of course, that wasn't going to be possible because Gucci had the contract. So um, I actually flew to New York and uh, sat down with the execs there at Atlantic to talk about the situation and make sure that it was understood that he had the paperwork in place and they should have known that. So I guess you were able to successfully resolve that situation? We did. The deal did not go forward the way it was supposed to, or at least the way they thought it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was able to protect Gucci's interest in that. Uh, so he was able to eventually do the deal with uh, Kevin Lyles and Leo Cohen at 300 for Thug. And I helped with that as well. So what's different about, I've been hearing about 300, and, and uh, it seems like an interesting venture. What's different about 300 as compared to the traditional model? Well, Todd and uh, Lior and, and Kevin have done, I think, a great job of what they've started so far. Um, you know, and without, I don't know the inner workings of the label, but what I do know about them is that they've got a platform that allows distribution uh, for those companies that solely want to do distribution. 
uh, through them and they also have the ability to sign artists for deals and joint ventures. Um, so 300 is, is very unique in that capacity that they are a small shop, but they have obviously the resources and the knowledge that come from three heavyweight executives that have been in the game with a lot of resources, contacts, and um, the, the know-how to get projects up and running. Um, so I think it's a great label that they've started. Um, obviously, they've had a lot of success even with the QC um, situation that they did. And um, I think they're going to continue to do well because being so small, but with the, the talent that they have inside the doors, um, they can do things a lot quicker than other labels can oftentimes, and they're able to get, um, they're able to have more flexibility when it comes to deals. So I, I saw you out at a birthday bash this past weekend with Lloyd. Oh yeah. Um, what yeah. are you working on with him? So uh, as you know, he's got a new single out called True. Uh, he actually speaks about his lawyer, so all of y'all should call your lawyer. <laughs> oh, you and, shout uh, out to him. Oh yeah, yeah. He says so many losses that my lawyer said don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, that's 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 pretty cool that Lloyd would uh, would make mention of us for reference to us, um, but I think you know it's it's been great just watching him kind of get back into the flow and and performing again and he's excited and everybody in his camp is excited about what's going on, um, so he's stepping up, stepping up his bookings again and he's um, doing a lot of performances and recording a lot of new music. Um, so one of the things that we did was we set up a distribution deal for him, um, so he's got his own situation right now. Um, but it's, it's totally independent right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a good thing. Obviously that means you know, it's better for him financially at the moment uh, and we'll be able to kind of look at other deals down the line. I expect that we have a lot more music coming out in the short future and um, his fans are gonna love it. I think the labels will love it as well and you can continue to watch him climb the charts this summer and, and beyond. Um, so I think that Lowry's gonna end up having a very successful year and I'm happy to be a part of that venture. Well, I don't think you're the, you're probably not the first attorney to get a shout out in an <laughs> urban uh, record. I, right. I know the, the perception, you know, when you talk about attorneys or when rappers or whatever talk about their attorneys, it's like it's like an older Jewish guy. Yeah. You know, you, you kind of, you don't fit the. I'm glad the, you brought the, that the up. Typical, you know, what made you decide to, to take this career path and, and do you think it's something that. You know, sure. others should, should look into as well? Sure. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of unique in that. And I'm, you're right, I'm not a, a Jewish lawyer from, uh, mm -hmm. from New York or what have you. A lot of people try to shout out in their songs, but uh, I think I, that what I am is actually um, unique and puts me in a position where I'm actually um, uniquely qualified, let's just say, to kind of help in the entertainment law sector. Um, and a lot of the things that people look for from those uh, other lawyers and other cultures and stuff, they can actually get right from their own you know, black attorneys here, and I recommend that people um, try to do that. For example, you know, I went to law school at Columbia in New York, um, where you don't see that many uh, minority representations, but I had uh, been blessed enough to kind of get that legal experience. Um, and in addition to working at some very, very um, prestigious law firms, uh, I actually had my own label deal through Universal. Uh, and so I've kind of got a business knowledge base as well as a legal knowledge base that I can kind of bring into the entertainment sector. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, I love the music and I love the culture. So um, that kind of gives me a benefit of having my ears to the ground. It's not uncommon to see me, like you said, actually at the events at Birthday Bash with, or you know, at, at Jeezy's first or, or Gucci's first shows and things of that nature. So um, I'm, at, I'm not just somebody who sits behind the desk. I'm actually an attorney that gets out there, that will come to the studios, that will help get deals done, hop on a flight to go travel where I need to to get things closed. And that's what I think a lot of our clients respect about us and, and come to us for. Is it tough to make that transition from being at, you know, uh, a club in Decatur at 4 in the morning to being in, in court at 8 a.m. time? Well, yeah, if I've got court the next day, <laughs> you probably won't catch me in the club. But, but um, yeah, we've, we've been able to, to balance the two very well. Uh, something that I'm proud of, uh, the knowledge base that we have and the ability to get the job done in the courtroom or in a boardroom setting. Um, but at the same time, not to lose touch with reality and being able to actually have a, my pulse on the industry as well. Again, I think it's, it's very valuable because I can advise clients, well, you know, you might not want to pursue that feature right now because XYZ is going on behind the scenes that somebody else might, might not know. Um, at the same time, I know this artist, for example, is really bubbling right now, and so it might be wise to hop on a feature. I, I was telling people to, uh, not long ago to link up with Young Greatness because I knew he was going to be blowing up soon. And I try to tell a lot of people, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm in those venues and I hear what's going on. He's going to be 
um, blowing up real soon. So, and now you see he's got a top 100 Billboard hit. So, being able to kind of get that knowledge early on before other attorneys will is, I think, something that's been helpful to our practice here. Well, I know one of the biggest legal stories of the year is, is actually about 20 years old with the uh, the O.J. Simpson oh, yeah. documentaries and series. Have you been keeping up, or do you have a, a little bit? A, a little bit. I've, I've uh, I haven't paid attention to all of them, but I did get a chance to watch one of them, and I and I saw you know a lot of heavy references to Johnny Cochran, who's uh, one of a mentor I can consider, and and I had the fortune of meeting him. Uh, he actually wrote one of these, a letter to me and signed his book, which is in my office now, oh. um, which, yeah, I, I've learned a lot just from watching his career and um, just the type of attorney that he was, and I aspire to kind of be like him. A, a personal someone, no, 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 someone to follow. That, someone you exactly, admire. exactly. Someone I admires when I read his books. Or I followed his, his uh, mm -hmm. career profession and, and what he did with the law, um, so I, I consider him to be a... A mentor, though he doesn't know it, just by me following his steps and what he did. Mm -hmm. Similarly, uh, attorney Charles Mathis, you know, who also passed and used to be a kind of iconic Atlanta entertainment attorney here. Um, he was somebody who I would consider a personal mentor that I worked with um, and spent a lot of time with before he passed. And um, you know, I knew it was going to be um, a challenge to kind of fill those shoes, but I knew it needed to be filled as well. So happy to kind of play my role in carrying on his legacy as well. So for anyone who's interested in, in your services, uh, whether it's an aspiring artist or someone else in entertainment, what's the best way for them to get in contact? Sure. Well, our website is thomasreynoldslaw.com, uh, and you can also reach us at 888-665-0241. Again, that's thomasreynoldslaw.com um, or 888-665-0241. You can also get us on Instagram at Call Your Lawyer. You have, uh, you have a... A slogan of you call, know, your <laughs> call, call your lawyer. Call your lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And any last words? Um, well, we look forward to working with everybody out there that's interested in really pursuing uh, a field of entertainment law, uh, or entertainment, I should say, in music, film, or television. Um, we're happy to provide our guidance and our support. And the one thing you'll hear about our clients that they'll say about us is that we really go in hard for our clients. We try to put 110% into everything we do with them and we're very loyal um, to our clients and we, we try to put their best interest above all else.